inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Not Your Mother's Hobbies. Today we got uh, our next miniature monster, an orc. I've got one of the alternate sculpts here. Uh, an orc woman with uh, a big giant mace. There's quite a few different sculpts in here, so I chose this one to switch it up a bit. Uh, here's our nice little clean thumb palette, and uh, let's get to it. All right, start things off with namely orc flesh. How can you paint orc flesh without orc flesh? Um, <laughs> I wanted a kind of sludgy... I don't know, really saturated, sludgy, toxic green. Uh, not as toxic, I guess, as the radioactive goblins from the last video. But that's sort of bright, colorful, really saturated look. Um, I usually do a muted, maybe more Lord of the Rings-esque, realistic skin. Uh, but for these ones, I really wanted to experiment uh, with, with kind of all the miniatures in this set. Just do something different or try something new. So yeah, orc green. That's what we're starting with. Real saturated, real colorful, real bright. You just cover all the exposed skin with that green and, and you'll be finished in no time. There's a lot of little fiddly bits like underneath her chest armor wrapping around. You can see a thin strip of her stomach, uh, her lower back, uh, underneath her arms and her sides. There's a lot of little in-between belts and, and wrist wraps and stuff. So just, you know, take a keen eye, do a once over, look out for all those spots. And, you know, don't be afraid to come back to it if you miss it or, you know, clean up and, and try again. You might notice too that uh, I'm not being too clean with this, you know, too accurate. I'm using a big sloppy brush and going in there. I'm not trying to be messy, but I'm not worrying about it either. Uh, a lot of the colors we're going to go in on this one are darker and they will cover the green. And uh, worst case scenario, we just clean it up a bit, take a moment and touch it up. You know how it goes anywhere there's metal we got to do that metallic basing basilicanum gray uh, i want to reiterate why i do that i put that basilicanum gray or any sort of darker color underneath my metallics to make it so that i can make mistakes with the the metallic paint that goes on top i like to do true metallics and when you do true metallics over top of these darker ones any place that isn't hit with a true metallic can look like dulled metal instead and it can really add to the textures that you're doing as well as save you time, energy, and effort. So just go around, hit all those plates, all the metallic parts. She's got hip plates, she's got uh, spiky leg greaves, uh, chest and back armor, hand armor, the big mace, you name it. Just go around, pick all those out. Right, Wraith Bone to clean up some of our mess. Uh, we're gonna really use it on some of these more darker um, little belts and, and loops and stuff, as, as well as anywhere that we got uh, too much green or, 
or gray on that we didn't want to. So just go in there, clean up your stuff, and get ready for the next part. My favorite leather, snake bite leather. This kind of orangey, browny, really nice, uh, warm brown. So we're gonna use this for all of our leather parts. Um, the loincloth, the belt loops, the wrappings on the weapon, all that stuff. We're pretty much gonna cover everything that's left with this. You can see here that I avoid the belt. I actually go back in later and I do the belt in this. You could even choose a different color for the belt if you really want to break it up. But for these guys, at least this one, I didn't decided not to. I think on some of the other ones I might have, but this one I thought, you know what? I don't want to do it. She'll still fit in regardless. It's all right. Now I wanted to do some cool, kind of colorful, orky hair, and I was thinking of World of Warcraft and stuff like that. They really have wild, colorful hair, so I, I picked Volupus Pink for a cool, cool sort of pink. <laughs> how, how many times can I say cool and pink? You get the idea. I wanted a really colorful hairstyle, and I chose my favorite Volupus Pink. Really love that one. It came in handy. All right, before we get too far into layering, I just wanna show you, here's where we're at. We're gonna start with the skin, and this is green skin, but you can see I've also done blue, and I've also done red. I didn't do it for all of our orcs, but just a couple. Some of the scenarios in the books have like call out for special named characters and stuff, so I chose to do that for one or two. We're coming in with war colors, green three here, and that's gonna to be to clean up and kinda of get our mid-tones in there. So start there for your green. If you guys want to see some some tutorials actually for other skin types, just like those goblins where I did the orange goblin, you let me know down in the comments if that's stuff you want to see. Otherwise, you know, when I get a blue guy coming up, you'll have a blue tutorial. Sooner or later, you let me know. But for now, we're doing green. Green three from War Colors. Get those mid-tones back in. Clean them up. All right, going in for the highlight, we got green two from War Colors. It's gonna come in here. This is what's gonna give us that real vibrant, toxic-y green. Maybe this is the radioactive green. I'm not so sure, but you know what I, you know what I mean. The, the kind of glowy, really hyper-saturated bright green. This is the color that's really gonna take us there at that next level. Uh, it's my favorite, Mr. Boucher would say. That's the next level. We're gonna kick it up a notch. So just go in with all the, the highlights. We're gonna do the brow, the ears, the chin, the nose. Get all the usual spots, the usual suspects. Brighten that up.
Here we go with the gun metal. Business as usual for our metals. I'm gonna go in with the gun metal. You don't have to hit everything. You can see I don't hit everything. Uh, I want this metal to look used, so I'm not aiming for full coverage like I might normally do. Uh, this is where that undercoating of the gray really, you know, is, is useful for what I was describing of the dull metal versus the clean metal, right? I'm not going to hit everything, just the tops and the middles and, you know, here and there. And it's going to look like it's it's rusted up, it's used. Uh, well, I guess not rusted, but you know, it's dulled up, it's smashed up, it's, it's orky armor, right? So, just go in, touch up all those areas, get some coverage, however much or little you want. Get those metallics in there. Right, null oil gloss, right? That's to keep that shiny look. So yeah, we will get the different tones of the dull versus the metallic shine, but this is gonna sort of marry them together, right? It's gonna really enhance the shadows. It's gonna sit in there and darken them. And we're also gonna get that glossy, shiny uh, finish that's gonna tie everything together. So just to reiterate, those are the steps why I do it that way. Um, that's why you're always going to kind of see it that way, and I hope that helps to explain my process a bit. So just go over with that Null Noil Gloss, kick this thing's butt. All right, there's not a lot of extra touches for this one. A pretty simple miniature. We're going in with the chrome to hit it with those little pings. Make them pop. That's what you want. You want them little sparkly, shiny, ping-a-ling dings. Make them pop, make them sparkle, make them shine. Another thing I want to note, and I hope you can see with this armor, this orcish armor, is uh, I'm, I'm not doing some of these highlights straight and narrow, you know, I'm doing them sort of irregular, uh, jagged, speckly, uh, that's going to add more to that texture, that's going to make it feel really um, beaten up, uh, irregular shapes like orcish armor, to me, is, it's going to enhance that look.
All right, mechanic is standard gray. We're going basing. That's one of these final touches. This guy doesn't have a lot going on, right? Not a lot of color breakup, not, not a lot going on. You could do more, but this is how I'm doing it to the artwork. Mechanicus Standard Gray, cover that base. Uh, we're doing the same steps we did for the Goblin base. These are going to be the same steps for all of my monster bases. They will all look like this. Astro Granite, uh, some other kind of texture paint, whatever you got. I got Astro Granite, it's already got gray in it. Slather that on there, get some extra texture. Let that puppy dry. Remember, order of operations, if you don't have a gray one and you wanna do a gray base, put the texture paste on first and then paint it gray. <laughs> All right, while that dries and turns into a cool texture, we're coming in here with Wraithbone and doing them teeth. That's all she's really got for extra bits. Uh, I decided not to do any kind of hair uh, highlights on her. So that was it, just the teeth. Long beard gray dry brush, now that it's dried, get that initial burst of texture. Coming in with Agrax Earthshade or any other kind of brown wash. Uh, you could use a black wash, but you know what I mean. Kick it up with a, a wash. Really drop on, splosh on in those textured spots to, to add some hyper contrast. Uh, and then let it dry for the next step. That final dry brush. And here it is, the final dry brush. Just boom, get it on there, make it shine. And that's it. That's our orc all finished. You might notice we're not doing a final thumb palette showdown. Clever, keen eyes will notice that the thumb palette changed in between. I did two separate recording days and it all washed off. <laughs> but here you go. If you followed along or did your own, you should have a completed orc. Here's some of the other um, sculpts, right? On the left, you can see the one from the artwork. Uh, you can see this guy here looking pretty rad. Um, that rusted chain above his arm, I just used uh, another brown and, and dabbed on some orange, right? I think I did the same snake bite leather to make like a rusty brown color, and then I just dry brushed on an orange I had lying around. Check these guys out, they're all used with the same techniques, get the same results, and they came out pretty cool. If you guys liked seeing a video where I did uh, one of the alternate sculpts and you want to see that more often, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you want to see just the one from the art and, and see in the aftermath, in the showcase, how the steps we did can be applied to the, the other alternates, let me know if you like that better. Here we go, the final red one. I did do some highlights on her hair with a blue. Here is the blue guy looking mighty blue no hair on him <laughs> and that's it we got a pretty good looking team of all kinds of orcs here uh, hopefully you do too you know if, if you've been doing these along on on your own let me know where you're at you know how have you been doing are you going to use this recipe for these orcs from hero quest are you going to use this recipe for your Warhammer orcs or orcs from another game, your Lord of the Rings orcs, you know, let me know your orc recipes down below. How are you painting your dudes? You know, let me know that. As well as let me know what you want to see next. What are you looking forward to in the monster lineup for Hero Quest, or even your hopes for other games? If you liked the video, let me know in the comments down below. Hit the, the big thumbs up, hit all the bloops, subscribe if you have it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!